What's up guys, it's Aiden, and today we're gonna to go through how Drake's One Dance was made. Let's get into the video. One Dance was produced by DJ Mafarissa, 40, Wizkid, and 1985. And I'm very excited for this remake today because, I mean, it's one of Drake's most popular songs. And it was very influential throughout the 2010s in music in general, and especially in R&B music, with Drake, who, in my opinion, is most well-known as a rapper, coming in with this rapping style that's somewhat out of character for him on a beat that is also somewhat out of character as a Drake-type beat. And I would go so far as to say this song stands on its own, and it is completely different from any other of Drake's songs. The only ones that come to mind being similar would be Passion Fruit, Hotline Bling, and Controller. But even then, instrumentally, it is sonically different and it's also different as far as arrangement goes. So that's my long way of saying I'm very excited for this video today. Thanks to Unison Audio for sponsoring this video today and making it possible. They just released a new plugin called Sound Doctor, which in my opinion is underrated. It has some really unique benefits for producers and in particular beat makers. Now, this isn't scripted at all. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think. There are two significant benefits I see with Sound Doctor. Number one is just the sheer amount of effects that you are offered. So you have 25 different unique effects, which honestly I've never seen this many effects in one plugin. Having one plugin where you can essentially add all the effects you need will be very useful for the CPU. It won't be nearly as taxing. And the second thing is the plugin takes full advantage of this. So say you have a sample that you really like and you don't know what you want to do to manipulate it. You have this generate feature where you can quickly come up with complex effect chains and this can be really inspiring. For example, I'm going to take a loop from my new drum kit. Added Sound Doctor to the sample and go generate. Let's have a listen. This is so useful because I can just cycle through complex effect chains really quickly. Ooh. Really big thanks to Unison for sponsoring this video. Almost all the money that came from this promotion went straight back into this video, into purchasing plugins and sample packs to try and make this remake as accurate as possible because I get pretty obsessed with making these uh, remakes as close as possible. So I hope you guys really appreciate the precision of this remake and uh, we have a good time. One more thing before we get into it. I know this is a long preamble, but this is of some big news. You may have seen on my Instagram that we'll be flying to the US in November to meet with some artists and producers and that will be both for networking and hopefully some really good content for you guys. So we'll be in these places at the these dates and if you're an artist or a producer in the area and you want to link up and be a part of one of these videos hit me up on instagram and we can sort something out so a really big shout out to you guys here on youtube as well as on patreon and the sponsors for making this possible it's your guys support that's allowed us to go to the us and hopefully bring the content to the next level anyway thanks for bearing with me through all of that um let's jump into the remake <laughs> to remake one dance there are five pillars to this instrumental so that's going to be the sampling the instruments the drums the bass and the sound effects slash ambient sounds that play throughout the entire song so I'm going to break down each one of these pillars for you guys in this video today. And as always, I will be comparing the final result with Shazam to see if it picks up the original song One Dance on my phone from the remake. One Dance samples this song called Do You Mind by Kyla. It's the Crazy Cousins remix. First part comes in around one minute in. Don't tell me I need to know Where do you wanna go Cause if you're down, I'll take and then uh, second part comes in at 2 minutes and 32, which is the beginning of the song. Baby, baby, I like your style. Awesome. So if we bring it into the project, it's going to sound like this. Baby, I like your style. Now this song, Do You Mind, is actually at 127 BPM and One Dance is at 104 BPM. So we're just going to stretch that out to match it with the project. <laughs> Then for effects on this sample, we're going to be adding Fruity Parametric EQ2 for a low pass filter. Then we're also adding Valhalla Room for some light reverb. Baby, I like your stuff. And with that low pass filter, it's making this sample sound a little bit more lo-fi because the high end usually would be in high quality recording equipment. So since we're chopping it out, it's going to sound a lot more retro and I feel like it gives the sample a bit more heart. Then what I find so interesting about this sample is, as you can see, we've made a chop here and that's because in the original song, this part of the sample doesn't continue where she says style, but instead we're adding in this second part of the sample where she says, take it slow. Take it slow. So what we're doing is we're combining style with slow to make her say 
Stow, which happens in the original song. Like which I find so funny because every time you see the lyrics for this song, it says style, but in reality, they've actually warped her vocals. So she's saying Stow. So that part of the sample comes in at two minutes, 36. Then we have the second part coming in at one minute. And that just plays on its own at the 1 minute 53 mark, which is going to sound like this. Then finally, to finish off the sampling, we're chopping up this part here. And that's going to be playing like this. Then that goes back to her saying, Cause if you're down. I really enjoy the sample manipulation in this song. It's very relaxed and it adds a lot of character, I'd say, to the instrumental. So that's the sampling. Next up, we have the instruments. We only have two different instruments, the piano and the guitar. For the piano, I opened up Keyscape and we're using the LA Custom C7 Stage Piano. And we're playing these chords. This is what it's gonna sound like without any effects. Then for effects, we're gonna be adding RC20 Retro Color. I pretty much add RC20 to everything in this instrumental. And this is mainly to add some air distortion and to bring up the tone, making it sound more retro. From there, the high end was a bit too harsh, so I added some parametric EQ2. Then some multi-band compressor to make the sound what I would describe as more relaxed. Then to boost up this sort of retro feel of the piano, we're adding some Isotope Vinyl, which is a plugin I haven't used in a while. This is a free plugin. We're boosting up the wear and bring the year down to 1980. Then some pretty big reverb and finally some more RC20 to bring up the distortion and bring down the tone, the mid-tone specifically. So that's gonna sound like this. I was very happy with how that piano turned out and that fits nicely into the instrumental. Then for the second instrument, and this one's very iconic and memorable from this song, we're gonna be using a Fender Telecaster. So to replicate that digitally, I'm adding Ample Guitar TC, which is a guitar VST modeled off the Fender Telecaster. This is probably one of the best ones you'll find on the internet. So this is what it's gonna sound like without any effects. Then for effects, we're gonna be adding, you guessed it, RC20 Retro Color for some boosted distortion, reverb, and bringing up the tone. So that's gonna open it up more and make it stand out more in the mix, which is gonna sound like this. So that's it for the instruments. Next up, we have the drums. What I'm about to say next might surprise you. One dance. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't know why I said that. One Dance has four different drum patterns that it plays throughout the entire song. So the first one's gonna sound like this. Second one. Third one. And finally, the fourth one. And for the samples, of course, you knew this was coming. We have the identical kick, which sounds like this. And you can see it's identical by comparing the waveforms to the original song. Fits very nicely. We also have the exact snare sample that was used, which I can prove by looking at it through an EQ and comparing that to the original song. So this is the snare sample. And this is the original song. I think it looks slightly different because in the original song, there's other stuff playing, but it sounds the exact same. So I'm going to call it the identical snare. Sue me. So this is everything so far. Like Then next up, we have some shakers coming in. And that plays this pattern pretty much throughout the entire song. But the tone of these shakers was too low, so we need to boost this up. So to boost this up, we're gonna be adding RC20, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're gonna be adding RC20 Retro Color, adding some distortion and boosting up the tone. Then, and this plugin is really important, we're adding Ozone 9 Equalizer to really boost up the high end and add a really harsh high pass filter. So that's gonna sound like this. So without effects, then with effects. And like I said, this shaker pattern plays pretty much throughout the entire song. But when we get towards the end of the song, we have some new shakers coming in. As well as some folly. And that pattern's gonna sound like this. With the drums. Really cool. And with the sample. Cause if you're down, cause if you're down, 
then next up we have what was the most difficult part of this song for me to recreate. I think this is a log drum. It might be a steel drum. It's some sort of little bongo-y drum sound and I lost a lot of sleep over this sound. I'm sure some of you guys are gonna be like, oh, it's the most obvious sound ever, but I couldn't find it, so whoop de doo And I ran through a bunch of different log drum, steel drum, and bongo sounds to try and find the exact sample. And the closest one I could come up with sounds like this, which is this sort of hollow light log drum sample. And that plays this pattern. So it sounded like this originally. Then for effects, we're gonna be adding some RC20 retro color for some distortion, bringing up the tone, adding some noise, so some white noise. And this is adding some more life and high end to the sample. Then added some compression, some more RC20 for some air distortion, bringing up the tone once again. Then finally, we're adding a ton of reverb. So it's gonna sound like this. And since there are sometimes multiple log drum patterns playing at the same time, I exported this one which sounds incredibly goofy on its own, but this is what it sounds like all together. Then we have a couple more log drum patterns going on later on in the song. So the first one. And second one. So all together. So that's it for the drums. Next up we have the bass and we only have two different bass sounds that come into this song. The first one is this bass drum that's gonna sound like this. And that plays on every beat. And as you might've noticed, it's not playing exactly on beat. It's actually playing a little bit later. And that happened in the original song, which I'll be proving in a second. But I think the reason that they did this is so that the kick and the bass drum don't interfere in the lower frequencies because they are both low end instruments. And I know that can be done by side chaining the bass to the kick, but for whatever reason in this song, they just brought it a little bit further back. And I can prove this to you. So in the original song, if we look at the audio up here, as you can see, everything is in time. Then when we come to the outro, when it's just the bass playing on its own, the bass is not playing in time. It plays slightly off beat. Then for the second bass sound, it's this synth sound that only comes in during WizKids verse. So I made this synth using two different instances of silence. This is the first one. As you can hear and see, these notes slide up and down to each other, which you can do in silence by turning on mono legato and bringing up the portamento. I made this sound using three different sine wave oscillators. Then for effects, <laughs> We're adding some more distortion using RC20 Retro Color, then adding some Ozone 9 Imager to make the sound wider. Then um, we're adding Silent back in to add these sub frequencies. And as you can see for effects, we've added a side chain to it. That way there's no clashing in the sub frequencies between this sound and the bass drum that plays throughout the entire song. So that's gonna sound like this. That's it for the bass. Next up, we have the sound effects. The easiest one for me to explain is this crowd chant sound effect. And as you can hear, we've added a side chain to this sound using kickstart. Then the second sound effect, which is a lot more subtle, but I still hear this in the original song, is this sort of low pad, which comes in. And we've actually sampled this from Do You Mind, so it's gonna sound like this without any effects. Then for effects, we're adding this really harsh brick wall high pass, brick wall low pass filter to the sound. So this is before and after. And if you listen to the original song really closely, I swear you can hear this sound playing throughout the majority of the song. Then we're adding a ridiculous amount of reverb. Then we have one more sound coming in before we get to the final result, which is this sort of machine gun sound effect. I couldn't find the original machine gun sound effect that they used. So instead I chopped up this sound effect and we use this part here. And using the new volume automation effects in FL Studio, I just shortened this clip in, so it's gonna sound like this. So that's it for the instrumental. Once again, before we get to the final result, don't forget to message me on Instagram if you're interested in linking up on the US trip. And depending on how many big placements you've had, we could do a dedicated video just on you. This is the final result.
there you have it. We got the Shazam comparison. Anyway, um, anyway, that's it for the remake. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.